Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how to determine the standard enthalpy change of reaction. I'm showing you the definition of standard enthalpy change of reaction here. Standard enthalpy change of reaction is the enthalpy change when a reaction takes place in the molar quantities shown by the balanced chemical equation under standard conditions, with all of the chemicals in their standard states. In this video, we're going to look at how to determine the standard enthalpy change of reaction for a displacement reaction. I'm showing you here the reaction between magnesium and copper sulfate. Because magnesium is more reactive than copper, it can displace the copper from copper sulfate solution. This reaction is exothermic, so heat energy passes from the chemical system to the surroundings. Now we're adding a solid to a solution, so in this case the surroundings are the solution, and the temperature of the solution will increase. We're going to add magnesium powder to 100 centimeters cubed of copper sulfate solution with a concentration of one mole per decimeter cubed. So let's look at how we carry out the experiment. First, we need to weigh out the magnesium powder. The copper sulfate solution has a concentration of one mole per decimeter cubed. 100 centimeters cubed of this solution contains 0.1 moles of copper sulfate. We want the copper sulfate to be in excess. The equation shows that magnesium reacts with copper sulfate in a one to one molar ratio. This means that we need to add less than 0.1 moles of magnesium if we want the copper sulfate to be in excess. We're going to add 0.05 moles of magnesium. The molar mass of magnesium is 24.3 grams per mole, so we need 1.22 grams. We now measure 100 centimeters cubed of our copper sulfate solution into a polystyrene cup. Because polystyrene is an insulator, this reduces heat losses from the solution, so we can measure the temperature increase more accurately. Next, we place the polystyrene cup inside a glass beaker to reduce the risk of it tipping over. Now we place a thermometer into our solution. We need to make certain that this solution is at the same temperature as the room, so we take temperature readings every 30 seconds until we have a constant temperature. Now we add our pre-weighed magnesium powder and stir with our thermometer. We need to take temperature readings every 30 seconds for five minutes. I'm showing you a typical set of results here. The magnesium powder was added at one minute and 30 seconds. As you can see, the temperature rises due to the thermal energy released by the reaction. Once the temperature reaches a maximum, it then decreases. Now we could take the maximum temperature change and use this to calculate the standard enthalpy change of reaction. However, there is a problem with doing this. As we've seen, the temperature of the reaction increases and then decreases. This decrease in temperature is due to the thermal energy being lost to the surroundings, for example, the air. Now you need to bear in mind that these heat losses will have taken place throughout the reaction. So we need to correct for these to get an accurate value for the temperature increase. To do that, we draw a vertical line from the start of the reaction. We then draw a line back from the cooling part of the curve. Where the lines meet is the point where the temperature would have reached if there was no cooling. As you can see with these results, this is 79 degrees Celsius. The starting temperature was 21 degrees Celsius, so the temperature change was 58 degrees Celsius. Now we can calculate the enthalpy change of reaction. First, we need to calculate the heat energy released by the reaction. To do that, we use this equation, which we saw in a previous video. Q equals mc delta T. We used copper sulfate dissolved in water. The volume of our solution was 100 centimeters cubed. Because this is an aqueous solution, we can assume that the density of this solution is close to the density of water. In other words, one gram per centimeter cubed. So the mass of the solution was 100 grams. We can also use the specific heat capacity of water, which is 4.18 joules per gram per Kelvin. And remember that we treat degrees Celsius as equivalent to Kelvin. Putting these into the equation gives us a value of 24,244 joules for the heat energy transferred into this solution. Dividing by 1,000 converts this to 24.244 kilojoules. To work out the standard enthalpy change of reaction, we need to divide the heat energy by the number of moles. We use 0.05 moles of magnesium in our reaction. 
Dividing 24.244 kilojoules by 0.05 moles gives us a value of 484.88 kilojoules per mole for the enthalpy change of reaction. And because this is exothermic, we need to give this number a negative sign. In the next video, I'll give you two questions on standard enthalpy change of reaction to try yourself.